why Vader let this teenage girl who had tried to kill him live. Vader was never known for mercy. In his very first act as a Sith Lord, he murdered hundreds of Jedi Knights, younglings, and Force Adepts in the temple on Coruscant. Since that moment, even when the objects of his wrath were innocent, Vader showed indifference to whether they lived or died. So if he had been so heartless in his murder of younglings, why did he let this particular teenage girl live, even after she tried to assassinate him? To know the truth, we have to start at the beginning. It was 19 years before the Battle of Yavin, just a short time after Chancellor Palpatine had announced himself as Emperor. Vader was on a relatively routine mission on Kabara, a planet within the colony's region that lay between the mid-rim and central planets of the galaxy. He was there to investigate unregulated force use. He started his investigation where he could find the most information, a cantina. Vader's ominous entrance into the Denji Bar made him the most standout character in a room full of colorful rogues. Though this watering hole was populated by all different types of criminals from across the galaxy, none even came close to the looming sense of dread the Sith Lord brought with him, as he almost floated through the room with his signature cape biting at his heels. The one key difference between him and everyone in there was strikingly obvious. Their faces showed emotion. The helmet Vader wore showed nothing but vacant, domed-out eyes and a mouthpiece useful for nothing more than survival. However, that wasn't the reason the bar patrons were simultaneously drawn to and afraid of him. As he stalked through, there was a great sense of dread in the air. All parties knew that the room was a single match light away from exploding into chaos. As he went further through the bar, he saw a hologram of himself, held by a group of bounty hunters who had suddenly crowded around it. Suddenly, he calmly assessed the situation. He knew he was being watched. However, one of his followers was not who he expected. Up on the balcony, hidden in the shadows, a teenage girl kept her blaster rifle aimed at the back of the Sith Lord's helmet. You certain, father? Wrenched with nerves, the father reassured her that she should do her part. She set her rifle into gear, in an effort to covertly retrieve the lightsaber at Vader's waist. She activated the weapon's tractor beam, which emitted a powerful pull specifically for the saber. Like a ball of iron to a magnet, the lightsaber should have jolted into her beam, but it didn't move. These tractor beams were accustomed to drawing in metal of a far greater weight, so the fact that it wasn't attracting the relatively small hilt was cause for great concern. The longer the attempt went on, the more confused the teenage girl became, until Vader whipped around, pulled the hilt back with the force. With the strain of both the tractor beam and Vader's incredible force powers, the lightsaber hilt didn't remain intact for much longer as it split apart to reveal Vader's red kyber crystal. However, to avoid any further action from Vader, the teenage girl's mother, watching from another part of the balcony, threw an ion grenade down into the bar towards the Sith Lord. After a great explosion, Vader emerged through the smoke. This was not a normal Imperial investigation. He had originally come here to investigate illegal force use. The Emperor suspected that a Jedi who had escaped the Purge or an adept who would become one if given the right guidance. But instead of finding a Force user, Vader found a room full of bounty hunters, and he was the object of their crosshairs. This was a setup. There was no Force user. He was sent here to be assassinated. The bar quickly erupted into a sprawling battle between criminals and mercenaries alike. And the Ion Grenade having taken out most all weapons, of which there were many in the watering hole, the battling became increasingly creative, especially when Vader was at the center of it all. However, having lost his weapon as well, he was being equally as creative against the teenage girl and her bounty hunter parents. Using his hate-fueled force powers and a makeshift shield, he was simply too powerful for the bounty hunting family, despite their backup weapons and plasma shields. They had to turn back. The teenage girl, named Kanneth, obeyed her parents' orders to retreat, as Vader did the same in the other direction, but not before saving his Sith Kyber Crystal. Outside the bar, Chanith and her parents hijacked the speeder Vader arrived in with the Ninth Sister, one of the Emperor's Jedi Hunters. His anger not having subsided at all, Vader interrogated the Inquisitor as to who set up the trap. This was a trap. You fabricated a Jedi sighting here and hired those fools to destroy me. The Sister was adamant that she had no knowledge of the ambush and knew better than to cross him, but this didn't calm Vader down. Vader used the Force to steal the Inquisitor's lightsaber and held its hilt unignited to her throat, threatening. 
It is only a matter of time until I learn the truth. Vader took chase of the family, fueled by the now-growing conspiracy surrounding the attempt on his life. As Janeth sped off with her parents in an attempt to save themselves, they pondered as to who indeed it was they had attempted to kill. Common knowledge of the uninitiated was that all Force users were Jedi. And although they just witnessed Vader's Force use, the father of the family, Bada, felt something wasn't right. Either way, they wouldn't have long to think about it. Vader was chasing them. Trying to keep Vader at bay, Chanith's mother and father laid blaster fire on their pursuer. But Chanith herself, realizing the danger they were in, began to feel guilty. Father, I... I left him back there. I didn't think... Despite being in the heat of battle, Bada again reassured her. Ah, it's alright, Chanith. Don't be afraid. Just keep fighting. We'll beat him yet. Even he didn't fully believe that. As the chase raged on, Vader used everything at his disposal to stop the family eventually using the force to thrust a passing speeder on top of the trio. There was nowhere to run. The family clambered out of the crumbling vehicle. Wasting no time, Vader leapt on the family and lifted Chanith with the force, holding the Inquisitor's lightsaber to her neck, demanding to know who put out the kill order. Honestly, we don't know, Bada replied. The father quaked as he answered, his daughter in the grip of a Sith Lord before him. Breaking the silence, Chanith's mother, Ramat, mentioned that she was able to hack into the bounty hunter's network that the Order had come through to trace its origin. Quietly, Vader demanded, Do it. Now. However, in a slight position of power, Ramat and Bada disagreed. No. First, she goes free. Though Vader initially dismissed this as an unruly request in the situation, Ramat and Bada made a very poignant and heartfelt point. If Chanith was killed, they'd have nothing left to live for, meaning the information that they were about to gain about the origin of the Order would be wasted. The emotionless eyes of Vader's mask stared back at the couple. Although unclear as to how he was feeling, his next statement asking for proof of the information hinted that he was not ready to turn totally evil just yet. And when Ramat eventually got through the Hunter's network, Vader was in for a surprise. Someone on Coruscant doesn't like you very much. He released Chanith from his force grip. He had suspected there was betrayal within his ranks. As the teenage girl ran back to her parents, they had a request for her. They were bounty hunters, and they were simply doing what bounty hunters do, hunt their prey. But Chanith was just a girl, following her parents' orders. They chose to apprehend Vader, not their daughter. So they hoped they could reason with the Dark Lord. They realized justice needed to be served. Bada and his wife Ramat would allow Vader to take their lives without hesitation but they hoped that he would let their daughter live. So Chanith's father commanded his daughter to swear that she would forget what happened on that day, and that she would not seek revenge for the imminent murder of her parents. She looked at Vader and simply said, Nothing happened here today. After a brief pause, staring into the distance, Vader agreed. The family breathed a sigh of relief as Chanith ran to safety on her parents' request. Though known for his oftentimes needless brutality, this displayed a rare, softer side to the Empire's most powerful enforcer. As Ramat elaborated on her findings, tracing the Order back to the Empire's head office, Vader got what he needed. It was unwelcome news to know that the Emperor himself, Vader's mentor and master, was the likely culprit. Killing Chanith would have only prolonged that moment, so he spared her life. When back on Coruscant, Vader would likely forget the entire incident. Vader's emotionless exterior made his decisions hard to read, but this sparing of life was a unique insight into his mind. It could have been purely strategic, being finished with the altercation and not wishing to elongate it, or it could have been a flash of Anakin shining through.